In this video, we're gonna be talking about the designer handbags I would never buy. I have some deep-seated grudges against these bags. So if you own one, don't take it personal. The bags just either don't work for me because they don't match my personal style. I think they're too expensive or even ugly. Let's get started. So if you follow me on Instagram, you already know the first bag and that is the Chanel 22. The Chanel 22 came out in 2022. The only way I can describe this bag is it looks like a very expensive dust bag. When this bag first came out, Chanel gifted it to an influencer and when the influencer unboxed it, people were just ooing and aahing over the fancy dust bag, waiting on the influencer to actually unveil the actual bag. Come to find out the Chanel 22 is the actual bag. And when I say it looks like a dust bag, it actually looks like a dust bag. This bag retails for $5,300, which blew me away because it's just a fancy leather dust bag with Chanel on the front. It's not worth $5,300 to me. Because the Chanel may be $3,000, but $5,300 is overpriced. Chanel is known for their structured handbags and the Chanel 22 is very squishy and unstructured. It's almost sloppy. I understand that Chanel wanted to come out with a tote, but this is not the bag the Chanel fans were looking for. Nobody was asking for this bag, Chanel. YSL came out with it like a tote slash shopping bag in a quilted lambskin that's, that in my opinion is the bag that Chanel actually should have made. So this YSL shopping bag is really, really gorgeous. It comes in different sizes. The quilted lambskin kind of reminded me of the caviar. Whoever designed this bag, Chanel needs to poach them from YSL immediately. A lot of people on the internet have been asking, who's buying this bag? I feel like the person that's buying this bag is the person who buys Chanel regardless of what it is. If Chanel created a burlap bag and put Chanel on the front, these are the people that are gonna buy it. All the people I think that are clamoring to buy this bag are gonna be the ones selling it in 2023. Now don't get me wrong, if somebody gave me this bag, of course I would take it. Y'all would see me wearing that bag all over Instagram. I would probably do a review on it and tell you it was gifted, but me pay my money, 5,300 US dollars and dineros for that? No, not gonna happen. I don't like it. I really want that YSL shopping bag, but I wish I could take the YSL logo off of it and put Chanel on it. That would make me so happy. Unfortunately, I think that is illegal, so I won't be doing that and I will not be buying the Chanel 22. Let me know in the comments whether or not you love or hate the Chanel 22. The next bag I would absolutely not buy is the Prada Raffia tote bag. Now, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, that's cute. I feel like last year, all my favorite influencers bought this bag like in a far-fetched haul. I thought the bag was like $500 at the most because it looks like a Raffia version of this free tote bag that I got at a Women in Tech conference. I've read that it's handmade, so when I read that, I was like, okay, maybe $700. This bag is $1,790, $1,790 USD. What? For a bag that you can see through, when I first saw the bag, I was like, oh, it's cute. You know, you can take it to the beach. I feel like you're gonna have to put something inside of this bag, like this tote, in order for your stuff to not fall out. I have stuff fall out of my bags that close and seal. So I just could imagine how many things I would lose out of this bag. Also, this is one of those bags where it has holes so everybody knows your business. Like you can't be on your cycle and hide things. No, this is the bag that you're carrying this bag when you want people to see what you have. I'm sorry, I like bags to hide my belongings. This is not one of those bags. This is one of those bags that shows off what you have. I think another thing I don't like about the bag is it's very, very square and blocky. So Prada came out with a new version that I like a little bit more that has like more rounded corners and it looks like it fits on your arm a little bit better. It's still 1790 and see-through. I love the idea of it. I live in Chicago and I love to walk to the beach almost every day in the summer. I can see my fantasy self walking to the beach with this bag, but in reality, I know this bag wouldn't work for me because all my belongings would fall out. Like my favorite lipstick would be gone by the time I make it halfway. Can't do it. The only reason this bag is $17.90 is because it's Prada. I am not paying that price for what this bag is. Never ever. Let me know in the comments what you think of this Prada Raffia tote. So the next designer bag that I would never buy is the Loewe Puzzle Bag. Now, here's the thing. I like structured top handle bags, which this bag is, but something about that squishy component annoys me about this bag. It also looks like they've taken individual pieces of fabric and stitched it together to make a structured bag. Ugh, something about it just doesn't work for me. So the puzzle bag is designed by Jonathan Anderson. I have a love-hate relationship with all JW Anderson designs. There was like a JW Anderson Converse collaboration. She was called a run star. Super, super cute. I almost bought it. There's something extra about it that made me pause. 
Same thing with the J.W. Anderson black chain loafers. I feel like in 2021, everybody was wearing these damn loafers and I wanted a pair. Something about the design just always held me back. I think instinctively I knew they were gonna be dated because I don't see anybody wearing those loafers now. So as trendy as the Gucci Princetown loafers were, they still are very classic. If you have a pair of the Gucci Princetown loafers without the fur, you can still wear them to this day and kind of fly underneath the radar. Those J.W. Anderson loafers scream 2021 and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I say all that to say, something about the puzzle bag feels like a moment in time. I feel like in the last two years, so many people have bought it, talked about how timeless and classic and how much they love it. It just doesn't work for me. Whatever other people feel about this bag, I'm not feeling it. I went on Pinterest and I saw people styling this bag and this bag is gorgeous style. If you're into minimalism, it is the perfect bag. It gives you a little bit of oomph, pizzazz. I think it's a well-designed bag. I just don't like it. Of all the bags on the list, the puzzle bag is the one bag that I'm really puzzled about. Why don't I like it? Because everything should be there, but it's just not there for me. And it's kind of like love. It's either there or it's not, right? Let me know in the comments what you think about the puzzle bag. Would you buy it? Do you love it? We have now come to the Hermes section of this video. I've been having a lot of thoughts about Hermes and I plan to do a few Hermes videos in the future. That being said, I will never ever buy the Hermes Evelyn bag. The first time I saw the Evelyn bag, I thought, oh, that's an ugly bag. So the Evelyn bag is Hermes's crossbody bag. It's a very simple leather bag. Unlike the Kelly and Birkin, there's no hardware on this bag. The only way you know it's a Hermes bag is it has a large perforated H on it. I'll just say this bag is not my aesthetic. This bag is giving me soccer mom who's a little bit basic, who wanted a Hermes bag, but didn't want to buy a Birkin or a Kelly. I'm on the Hermes website and it's named after Evelyn Bertrand, who was the head of the Hermes writing department. Department. And that makes a lot of sense because if you wear this bag, I think you were in equestrian in your youth. You competed in the steeplechase. You love wearing chinos and striped jumpers. The bag was created for equestrians to hold horse grooming equipment. That says it all. So the bag retails for around $3,500 US. I don't own a horse, so maybe that's a normal price for horse grooming bags, but it's not worth it to me. For what the bag is, there are other bags that are similar. In order to buy a Birkin or Kelly bag, you need to spend a certain amount. And I feel like the majority of people that actually own this bag bought this bag because they're trying to meet the quota in order to buy a Birkin and Kelly. That's it, that's all. I'm sure there are people who love this bag, but like I said, it's just a totally different aesthetic. It's not my vibe, so I'm just gonna move on. Leave me a horse emoji if you like the Hermes Evelyn bag. So the next designer handbag that I would never buy is the Lady Dior. So the Lady Dior is one of those bags on its face that I should actually like because I love structured bags and I love top handle bags. So the two things I don't like about this bag are the handles and the Dior charm. So I've tried this bag on in a store and something about that handle annoys me. It's a top handle bag and I feel like the handles are well designed. They're meant to be gripped, but I don't like them. It's almost like a flattened duck build to me. Something about it is just not giving. And something about those charms. So either you're a charm bracelet person or you're not. I am not a charm bracelet person. I feel like people who love the Lady Dior bag love Pandora bracelets. Buy them with your bad self, buy them all up. Last year, a friend sent me a video about all the different iterations of the Dior logo. I feel like every other year, Dior is either playing around with its logo or the CD initials. I don't like that. <laughs> if you buy a Dior bag, and then you, in, in two more years, you buy another Dior bag, basically you could buy almost the exa exact same bag, but the logo is gonna look different. That doesn't sit well with me. When it comes to luxury, I like some continuity. I'm not saying that you can never change your logo. The bag doesn't really look like it fits very much either. Looking on the website, the medium Dior bag is $5,900. That's a lot for this little itty bitty handbag. I also have to realize I'm not the target demographic for the Lady Dior bag. I feel like the Lady Dior bag is for women who consider themselves ladies. They're very feminine. They wear frills and lace. They're girly. I feel like every bag comes with their own judgment. And that's how I stereotype people who carry Lady Dior bags. Now that I've trashed Lady Dior bags, let me know in the comments if you love Lady Dior bags and if you think I'm crazy. So a list of designer handbags that I would not buy would not be complete without a Bottega Veneta bag. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I own two Bottega Veneta pouch bags and a chain cassette bag. I loved the Daniel Lee era Bottega Veneta. Before Daniel Lee, I liked Bottega Veneta, but I didn't love them. During Daniel Lee, I loved that era. I liked a lot of the bags. In addition to the pouch and the chain cassette bag, I also really loved the mini Jody. Bottega has, has since come out with a teen Jody that I think is the perfect size. That being said, the one designer Bottega bag that I absolutely hate is the chain pouch. You would think that since I bought the pouch bag twice that I would actually love the chain pouch. And initially when I saw it, I was like, this is the best idea ever. Let me go buy this bag. I remember the first time I saw the bag in store. I think I was at like a Nordstrom. I saw the bag, I waddled up to the bag, put the bag on my shoulder. 
and was instantly disappointed. So it combines the dumpling shape of the pouch bag with the really cool chain of the chain cassette bag. You would think that that marriage would have a lovely offspring, but the concessions they made in order to make this bag were the wrong ones. They probably should have made the bag a little bit bigger. The capacity of the pouch bag is one of its greatest assets and the chain pouch has a very limited capacity. It's almost it's about maybe half of the capacity of the original pouch bag and I don't like that. That's the best thing about the pouch bag. The bag holds nothing. It basically holds as much as a mini Jody. And if you have either the chain cassette or the original pouch, you're not going to buy the chain pouch because you're going to be like, mm -mm, this, this is ghetto. Mm -mm. The current price of the chain pouch bag is $4,100. And I just don't think it's worth it. I don't like the bag. It's one of those bags that looks great from afar. In theory, in reality, it doesn't live up to the hype. I would never buy it. If somebody gifted me the bag, I would probably give it to my niece because the capacity is so low that I would never use it. I feel like it would be good for somebody who's young, who basically just wants to carry their phone around and be cool. But for somebody like myself, who actually wants to carry stuff around, it's not gonna work. Another thing I like about the pouch bag is it has a very wide opening. It's very easy to get into. The chain pouch bag, it's hard to get into. It's like the mini Jody. So the Bottega Veneta chain pouch bag is just a no for me. Let me know in the comments which Bottega Veneta bags you would never buy. So those were the designer handbags that I would never buy. Get in these comments and let me know which designer handbags you would never buy. And if you're interested in knowing which Chanel bags I would purchase without hesitation, I'm gonna link that video here. All right, see you at the next video. Bye. <laughs>